As a young girl, I often wondered and imagined what the future might be like. And I imagined a world where humans lived in harmony with nature, a world with technology ever present in our lives, and, but a world where people and planet thrived. Today, I wonder if our youth can imagine that same type of future. We are living in an ever-changing and ever-evolving world. Our greenhouse gas emissions are increasing. Our Earth is warming. But we as human, and we as humans are shaping our planet, and we are bringing Earth and humanity to the brink. In any part of the world, you will hear tragic stories of climate devastation. Droughts, wildfires, floods, lives and livelihoods in jeopardy, tipping towards catastrophe. We live in a world where 8 million people die each year due to air pollution. We have recently seen a global pandemic, and we see conflict in our world, reminding us of how fragile we are. And all of this is happening while we, according to many metrics, are, on average, healthier, wealthier, and more educated than at any time in history. We have more knowledge, more science, and more choices than we ever could imagine. But somewhere along the way, we lost our balance. And yet, I still have hope. And you might ask why. It's our capacity for human endeavor to survive against all odds. And it's this capacity that forged the extraordinary promise of the Paris Agreement and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And we know the promise of Paris. It aims to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees to ensure that we, as humanity, can survive. And to get there, we know exactly what we need to do. We must decarbonize the global economy by way of halving emissions in this decade. We need to phase out fossil fuels. The pollution from this is clogging our lungs and destroying our oceans and our forests. And we need to provide the resources and the funding that is needed for a fair and equitable green and blue transition. We know that these are all the ingredients we need to fulfill the Paris Agreement and deliver on a sustainable and safer and healthier and better future for everyone. Now, try to imagine with me what this journey to a sustainable, net zero and nature positive future might look like through another lens. So let me give you some examples of what this might look like. So consider Denmark. Denmark has chosen to produce all of its energy from renewable sources by the year 2050, and they're already past the halfway mark. 30 years ago, powering an entire economy using renewable energy would have been considered impossible. 10 years ago, it would have been considered too expensive. But now, renewable energy costs less and it creates more jobs than fossil fuels in many parts of the world. Denmark inspires me because it is a story of the human potential and it amplifies the deep knowledge of our scientists and our engineers. And there is huge potential for rapid decarbonization in urban areas. And Copenhagen has the aim of being the world's first carbon neutral capital city by 2025, and that's just three years away. Along with fostering renewables, they are adapting our public spaces and they are greening transport and mobility. Clearly, the climate benefits will be enormous, but it's about much more than cutting emissions. It's about creating healthy and livable cities which everyone can enjoy. It's about clearing our air and improving public health. Another example in Paris is extremely inspiring. In Paris, they are investing hundreds of millions of euro in greening the Champs-Élysées area. They are redesigning it as a bustling public park in the heart of the city. Through this, they are, they are turning roads into green and pedestrian areas. They are cutting space for cars by half, and they are creating tunnels of trees to improve air quality. They are tackling climate change, but they are enhancing the livability of their city. They are improving public health and they are boosting the economy. And Costa Rica. Costa Rica, just a few decades ago, had some of the highest deforestation rates in the world. But they introduced policies 
and they pay people now to protect trees. As a result, forests have regenerated and now they cover over 50% of the country. We know that when we invest in nature, we invest in people, we invest in economic prosperity, we invest in public health and we invest in quality of life. But what's holding us back? What will it take for this potential to become a shared reality for many, many people around the world? Well, firstly, we need to invest in research knowledge and capacity. This research knowledge and capacity will deliver the solutions that are needed in sustainability. As a scientist and as an engineer, I believe that the future of humanity will be bound to the future of engineering and science and will hinge on how successfully we harness our technological advances in harmony with humans and with nature to address the challenges of our time. In my research group at UCC, building on work I did at MIT, at Harvard and at the United Nations, my research group here and I, we develop intelligent solutions for sustainable, net zero, healthy, livable and equitable cities of the future. We harness new and emerging technologies like data analytics and AI and IoT, and we try to understand the interlinkages between human behavior, the urban environment, health and socioeconomics, so that we can inform policy and improve quality of life. We need to invest in interdisciplinary blue skies research to deliver on sustainability. Secondly, we need sustainability education. We need to train a generation of sustainability leaders. At UCC, I lead Sustainable Futures, and as part of this, we are developing university-wide and nationally coordinated educational programs in sustainability that bring together many different disciplines. Environmental engineering, environmental science, business management, economics, sociology, and much, much more. We are training a generation of sustainability leaders who will be able to take a systems thinking approach to solving the complex, multifaceted and interconnected sustainability and climate challenges of our time. We also need to ensure that our education is as inclusive, as accessible and equitable as possible. We must not leave anyone behind. We need to ensure that everyone's perspective is included in our, in our journey to a sustainable future. Thirdly, we need solidarity and cooperation. Sometimes these seem to be in fairly short supply, but we do know that they exist. After all, it's solidarity and cooperation that forged the Paris Agreement, the more recent Glasgow Climate Pact, and the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Right now, there's another young girl looking out in the world and, an ima and imagining what her future might be like. And that's my niece, Shun, and she is six years old. I also often wonder what her future will be like. Will her world be full of opportunity, or will her life be negatively affected by climate change? Shun is asking that question, and Shun's generation in countries and continents around the world are asking that question of all our leaders who hold their future in their hands. And they're asking it of all of us here today as well. The time for action has come, individually, collectively. We need to put sustainability at the heart of everything we do so that we can build a shared sustainable future for Shuan and her generation. It's time to take action and it's time to change our world. Thank <laughs> you.